Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our picture book story time here at the Caribou Public Library. I'm Miss Erin, and I'm glad that you're able to be with us today. So today, our story time theme is hats. Silly hats, work hats. This is a winter cap that I use on my farm. It's kind of dirty. Any kind of hat, all right? So if you have a hat, while we're kind of introducing things and just talking and maybe singing a little song, go see if you can find a hat or have your parents find your favorite hat something that you can wear while we are doing our story time today, okay? So while you're doing that, we're going to just sing our song that we normally used to sing during our preschool story time, which is Mr. Sun. So if you have your hat and you are able to join us and you're all ready to go, put your hat on your head. <laughs> Let's sing Mr. Sun today, okay? Here we go. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, hiding behind the tree. These little children are asking you to please come out so we can play with you. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Good singing, you guys. All right. So what we're going to start off with is a book called Zoe's Hats. It doesn't have a complicated plot or a really a story that it follows. What it does is it has a, lots of different colors and patterns that are identified in all of Zoe's hats. Okay? So we're going to quiz you on colors and see if you can count how many hats at the end and things like that, okay? So while we look at it, <coughs> excuse me, Zoe's Hats, A Book of Colors and Patterns is by Sharon Lane Holm. <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to take a drink of water. But somehow, <coughs> I'm coughing. Mm. I think that is the first time that has ever actually happened to me while we're live during story time. <laughs> and I happen to have water handy. All right, let's go ahead and see what types of hats Zoe has. Oh, look at her stack of hats. <laughs> Here is a red hat. Oh, look. Does that look familiar? Yeah, what kind of hat is that? <laughs> it's supposed to look like it's from a Santa Claus costume, doesn't it? That's a Santa hat with red and white trim. All right, red hat. How about this one? What color is that? It's a blue hat, isn't it? That looks like a sailor's hat with the anchor on the front. Then we have a polka dot zoo hat. Huh. Look at all those colorful polka dots. <laughs> it looks like a fun hat. Ah, oh, a brown hat. Who normally wears a brown hat that looks like that? It's a cowboy hat, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> the brim, the way that the brim is shaped, shades the cowboy from the sun, and it also keeps the rain out of his or her eyes. What color is this one? Yeah, it's green. There's her green hat. All sorts of different hats. Ah, here's a word you may not know yet. This is a plaid hat. Can you say that? Plaid. It has stripes this way and this way across them, which creates a plaid pattern. Oh, what color is the bunny hat? It's white, right? 
with the inside of its ears are pink. Hmm, I wonder why she has that face on. Does it look like she wants to wear the bunny hat? <laughs> Maybe not. Ah, how about the black hat? It has a pointy top. Do you see the shape of this hat? It's a triangle, isn't it? It has three sides. One, two, three. Black hat. And this is a gray spotted dotted hat. It looks like it's a colander that you use in the kitchen to strain noodles and stuff. A colander on her head upside down. Uh huh. Anyone know what color this one is? Purple. It's a purple hat, kind of floppy, right? How about this one? Right, yellow. Looks like a rain hat to me. Maybe it's rubber, something that is waterproof. Here's an orange hat. <gasps> That looks like a cat costume. Maybe a tiger. And a turquoise hat. Oh yeah. That looks like a beret. Can you say beret? A beret is a kind of hat that is most usually worn in France, customarily. Here is a violet hat. Look at that fancy thing. People used to wear hats like this at the beginning of the 1900s, maybe 40s, 50s, 60s, somewhere in there. It has a little mesh veil that they pull down over the tops of their face. <laughs> Here's a pink hat. That looks like a winter cap, right? That would keep her head warm. A what do you think hat? What do you think? Do you like this hat? Yeah, maybe yes, maybe no. It's colorful with polka dots and flowers. Zigzags, ooh, look at the stripes going all different directions. Zigzag pattern. Spots, spot, 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 spot. Stripes, yikes, it says, what did she do? That looks like a pair of underwear that she put on upside down on her head, <laughs> but it's striped. That's the pattern, isn't it? Mmm, a funny hat. Some people wear caps like that when they're swimming to help them go faster so their hair isn't swishing around. A flowery hat. Ooh, that would be fun to wear in a garden, a flower garden maybe, in the springtime. Silly. <laughs> she looks silly in that one. And bright. Look at all the bright colors and shapes. Do you guys see these shapes that are along the front? It looks like a crown almost. Those are diamonds, aren't they? Yeah. These are the hats that Zoe likes. Ooh, look at this one kind of a straw hat with colorful buttons in order of a rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Cool. So here we have the hats. Should we count and see how many we have on this page? Okay, ready to count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good counting. Okay, and how about these? Ah, can you name this color? Do you see it? It's yellow, right? Which one is the turquoise hat? Can you point at it on your screen? Which one is turquoise? The turquoise beret, right? Yeah, that one's turquoise. Hmm. So these are patterns. Ah, let's see if you can remember the name of the pattern that I told you to repeat. This one that has the stripes both directions. Do you remember what we called that? Plaid. Yeah, say it again. Plaid.
Good job. There's the end. She's peeking her face over the bottom of the <laughs> of the window, huh? That is Zoe's Hats by Sharon Lane Holm. All right. So now I have a book that is called The Magic Hat. It is by Mem Fox and illustrated by Trisha Tessa. I think you guys might like this one. It has some fun sing-songy lines that rhyme. The Magic Hat. <clears throat> There it is, blowing in the wind. <gasps> One fine day from out of town and without any warning at all. <gasps> there appeared a magic hat. Here it comes, floating on the wind. Oh, the magic hat, the magic hat. It moved like this, it moved like that. It spun through the air and over a road and sat on the head of a warty old toad. Oh my goodness, it turned the man into a toad. Oh, the magic cat, the magic cat. It moved like this, it moved like that. It spun through the air like a bouncing balloon and sat on the head, who's this guy, of a hairy baboon. <gasps> it's a baboon, look at the bananas. The baboon likes to eat bananas, huh? Oh, the magic cat, the magic cat. It moved like this, it moved like that. It spun through the air from way over there and sat on the head of a sleepy old can you guess what rhymes with there? Bear. <laughs> a bear. Oh, the magic hat, the magic hat. It moved like this, it moved like that. It spun through the air. It's true, it's true. And sat on the head of a... Something that rhymes with true. And look, it lands on this lady's hat. Do you see that she's holding a baby kind of in a pouch in front of her? A kangaroo, right. <laughs> oh, the magic hat, the magic hat. It moved like this and it moved like that. It spun through the air for a mile and a half and sat on the head of a lofty giraffe. And then, what's then? What do you think? With a skip and then with a hop. Oh, ho, ho, ho. A wizard appeared with a sign that said, Stop! Oh, there's his little stop sign. Can you see that? <laughs> <clears throat> the sign said stop. So everyone stopped and stared in surprise at the wonderful wizard with sparkling eyes who took from his beard with a nod and a wink a wand which he waved. And what do you think? The toad, the baboon, the bear, and the roux and of course, the giraffe, oh, what a to-do, turned back into people, dazed and confused, watched by a crowd that was highly amused. <laughs> now, look what else he has here. It's a big egg. Hmm, while no one was looking, the wizard, meanwhile, skipped out of town with a mischievous smile. Hmm. What happened to the egg? <laughs> Something gigantic hatched. And of course on his head was the fabulous hat. And that made all the magic wherever it sat. Oh, changed him into a little boy. <laughs> the 
and I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I thought it was pretty fun. All right, so for my last book today, we are going to read a book called Stormy's Hat. Did I explain why my theme today is hats? <laughs> I have a display upstairs in the kids' room of books all about hats because on the 25th, so in two days, it's, there's a day set aside called Wear a Hat Day. And it's to help people have awareness about brain cancer. So that's why all my books this week are about hats. Stormy's Hat, Just Right for a Railroad Man, uh -huh. by Eric A. Kimmel. And the pictures are drawn by Andrea Uren. This is a story that is true. It's based on a real man named Stormy Cromer. Stormy Cromer was an engineer. What's an engineer? Do you know? You might think that it's something different than what this book is telling us about. He drove a locomotive, a train engine, on the Red Stack Line from St. Paul, Minnesota, to Chicago, Illinois. Stormy loved driving trains. Do you know why this is one of the books that I chose? Because I have a great grandfather that was a train engineer. And he lived in Wisconsin, which isn't too far from Minnesota and Illinois. I thought it was kind of fun. He loved the woo woo. The steam engine whistled. He loved the chug, 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 chug of the locomotive. He loved the pocket pocket sound of steel wheels rolling along the track. There was only one thing about his job that Stormy didn't love. He couldn't find a hat that was right for a railroad man. Hmm. One Monday morning, Stormy climbed into the cab of his engine. He wore his new derby hat. As his locomotive en entered the Winston Tunnel, the wind snatched that derby from his head. Stormy tried to catch it, but his hat was gone. Great Casey Jones, Stormy shouted. <gasps> it was gone. He complained to his wife, Ida. That's the third hat I've lost this month. Why can't I find a hat that will stay on my head? Why can't I find a hat that's right for a railroad man? Well, I've been thinking about that, said Ida. It seems to me. Ah, oh, don't you worry your pretty little head, said Stormy. I'll figure out something. Hmm. A cowboy hat, that's what you need, Stormy's friend, Tex, told him. Get one with bonnet strings that tie under your chin. Then your hat won't blow away. Hmm, good idea. Stormy got himself a tall, wide Stetson. He tied the bonnet strings under his chin, just as Tex said to do. Here it is. The hat didn't blow off in the wind, but it was so tall and wide that it kept getting in the way. The brim flopped down into Stormy's eyes when he tried to read the gauges. Oil and coal dust stained the crown. Stormy began to run with a white, or well began the run with a white hat, and he ended it with a black one. This hat might work for a cowboy, but not for me, Stormy grumbled to Ida when he got home. I need a hat that is right for a railroad man. I think you should... Ah, don't you worry your pretty little head, said Stormy. I'll figure out something. A pressman's hat. That's what you need, Stormy's friend Nate suggested. Nate was a printer who ran the presses that printed the great Chicago newspaper. He showed Stormy how to fold a pressman's hat from a sheet of newspaper. It's small, so you won't get in your way, and it blows off... If it blows off or gets dirty, you just make yourself another one. Hmm, made out of paper. This is the hat for me, said Stormy. 
he walked down to the rail yard wearing his new pressman's hat. <laughs> the hat worked out fine until, oh no, a spark from the firebox landed on it. Stormy's paper hat began to smolder. Then it burst into flame. I'm on fire, Stormy yelled. He flung the pressman's hat out the window, just in time. A pressman's hat may work for a printer, but not for me, Stormy groaned as Ida rubbed ointment on his singed scalp. I need a hat that's right for a railroad man. Have you considered? Aw, oh, don't you worry your pretty little head, said Stormy. I'll figure out something. Sounds like maybe he needs to listen to her. Huh? What has she got some ideas about? Try a fireman's hat, said Stormy's friend Mike, the fireman. My hat's made of leather, so it won't burn. If it gets dirty, just wipe it clean. The brim is in the back, so it won't get in your way. And it's heavy, so the wind won't blow it off. That might work, said Stormy. It did for a while. The fireman's hat didn't blow off when Stormy leaned out the window. It didn't get in Stormy's way when he checked the gauges. To clean it, he just wiped it with his handkerchief. And no matter how many sparks landed on the hat, it didn't catch fire. Sounds like it's working, doesn't it? But the fireman's hat is mighty heavy and hot to wear. It gave Stormy a headache. Oh, my head feels like John Henry is pounding it with a sledgehammer, Stormy said to Ida as she brought him some headache tablets and a glass of water. Policemen have hats, sailors have hats, even coal miners have hats. Why can't I find a hat for a railroad man? Maybe if you, oh, don't you worry your pretty little head, said Stormy. I'll figure out something. <laughs> well, I may not be here when you do. If you say that one more time, Stormy, I'll walk out the door and not come back. My head is not little. It's as big as yours and just as smart. Either listen to what I have to say or stop complaining. Oh, she did have an idea, didn't she? <laughs> Golly, Stormy said. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Ida. I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? Just talk to me the way you talk to all your friends. Ida picked up her sketch pad and took out her drawing pencil. I have an idea, she said. Close your eyes and imagine you're in a hat store. You found the perfect hat for a railroad man. What does it look like? Stormy leaned back in his chair and he shut his eyes and he, oh, tight. He said, it has a wide brim to keep the sun out of my eyes. Ida began to sketch, but not so wide that it gets in my way. Ida erased. If it's tight so it doesn't blow off in the wind, Ida sketched, but not so tight that it makes my head hot or gives me a headache. Ida erased. It won't catch on fire. I can wash it with my overalls when it gets dirty and I can fold it up and carry it in my pocket if I don't want to wear it. Oh. Ida finished sketching. Open your eyes, Stormy. How about this? Ida showed her drawing to Stormy. Stormy stared at the picture. It's perfect. This is the hat I want. This is the hat for a railroad man. Where can I buy one? You can't, said Ida. It doesn't exist. I made it up by drawing what you described. But now that I know what the hat looks like, I'm sure I can sew one for you. Wouldn't, would you do that for me? Stormy asked. I promise that from now on, I'll listen to everything you have to say. <laughs> it's a deal, said Ida. So, <gasps> it's an engineer's hat. Ida looked in the closet. She found one of Stormy's old baseball caps. She cut off the top and made a new one out of canvas. It looked like a bubble. Ida extended and recovered the old brim and attached it to the new top. Try it on, she said to Stormy. 
Stormy put the hat on his head. It fit just right. It's exactly what I've been looking for, he exclaimed, admiring himself in the mirror. Stormy wore his hat to the railroad yard on Monday morning. He made the run to Chicago and back. The hat did not blow off. It didn't get in his way. It didn't catch fire. It didn't give him a headache. It got dirty like his overalls, but it would wash clean again. And when Stormy didn't need his hat, he tucked it away in his pocket. Ida had done it. She had created the best hat for a railroad man. <laughs> they were a good team, huh? Hey, Stormy, where'd you get that hat? I want one too, each of the railroad men said. You're out of luck, boys, said Stormy. There's only one hat like this in the whole wide world, and it's mine. Ida made it for me. Would she make hats for us? She might. Why don't you ask her? Engineers, brakemen, firemen, everyone who worked on the railroad wanted a hat like Stormy's. Orders came in from all over the country. There were too many hats for Ida to make by herself, so she and Stormy opened a factory. Soon they were sending hats to railroad men all around the world. <laughs> More than a hundred years have passed since Ida made that hat for Stormy. Today, wherever you find trains, you will find people wearing Stormy's hat. It's the only one that's right for a railroad man and a railroad woman. <laughs> they owe it all to Ida, who knew exactly what Stormy needed, and to Stormy, who listened. Look at that. There's the author's note. Here's a picture of them. Well, it's a drawing. <laughs> they were a real couple. Stormy was an engineer on the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad. He loved baseball as much as he loved trains. So Stormy played on a semi-professional team throughout the Midwest. In Stormy's time, engineers and brakemen wore derbies or fedoras. Neither of those hats stayed on long in the high winds that blew through a locomotive cab. After losing his hat too many times, Stormy vowed to find one that would stay on his head and meet the needs of a trainman. Stormy described his ideas to his wife, Ida, who was a talented seamstress. In the autumn of 1903, so a hundred and almost 120 years ago, she took one of Stormy's baseball caps and made it into the hat that railroad workers have worn ever since. The end. So, thank you guys for joining us today. If you still have your hat on your head, I would love to see pictures of all of you guys wearing hats at home <laughs> while you're watching this. If you're able to and you have a parent who can take a picture and include it in the comment section below that would make my day i hope you guys had fun and we'll see you again next week oh and a quick reminder for those of you who are planning on coming in to vote for the chickadee award the um children's choice picture book award that we've been had been reading a lot of the different book selections throughout the winter january end of january and february and into march um go ahead and come in this week because the ballot booth is open and it's ready for you to come in and choose your favorite out of the 10 options through Saturday, okay? So this Saturday is the last day that you can come in to vote. All right, have a great rest of your day. See you next week. Bye for now.